Hey guys, thank you for watching. For this video, I wanted to make an editing tutorial. Uh, so before I get started on uh, real heavy on how I shoot certain locations, I wanted to show you the process or the workflow that I use to edit uh, my sessions. Uh, and the reason I want to do that is, uh, is twofold. Really, the first one is because uh, since we're getting work away, work awayers to come to our house and kind of help us out. Uh, when it gets busy, I want to be able to give them something so that they know our editing style and uh, so that that way they can help us with that when we get too busy. And the other reason is because uh, when I first started editing um, five, six years ago, let's see, 2000, yeah, about six years ago, it would take me somewhere between three to six hours to edit a simple session like a ceremony or like a ceremony uh, photo tour. And so uh, I didn't really see too many little tricks on how to get, become faster at editing so that I didn't come home after a you know, two, three hour uh, wedding or sometimes even a six hour wedding and then spend another you know, six hours trying to edit the work that I just did. And so I'll focus mainly on the workflow. And then as I go, I'll try to, you know, mention some tips on how to shoot so that it's easier to edit. And um, it's not too many, but they help me out a lot so that that way uh, when I go home and I, I edit, it's a lot easier for me to pick uh, the images and then just go through and edit them, you know, one by one. And so, so let me get started. I'll start from the beginning. So I'll assume that maybe you don't know anything about uh, editing. So if you do, uh, this might get a little slow for you, but I think some of the tricks uh, and some of the techniques that I use might help you out if you're taking you know, a long time to edit something that shouldn't take too long. Now, a ceremony and a photo tool, which is about, uh, let's say I shoot about four to six hundred images uh, raw off the camera. Um, I probably can do that in about 45 minutes to an hour depending on how distracted I am while I'm editing. Uh, so I'll show you guys the workflow and um, yeah, I can already, I don't like making long YouTube videos but uh, this one's going to have to be one of those long ones so stay with me and then uh, if you have any questions or anything like that make sure you uh, mention them on the comment below. And then one of these days I can do a live session and then we can kind of walk walk through or talk through all those questions and, and difficulties that you might be having. Okay, so let me get started. So I'm gonna make my screen smaller. <coughs> all right, so now because this is the first time that I'm, uh, I'm recording my screen on a laptop, it might be a little bit slower uh, as, as far as um, generating the previews on Lightroom. Actually, before I get to Lightroom, let me just show you what I do with my with my import. So I'll open up an Explorer and then I'm gonna use my friend's Mel's uh, family session. It's not, it wasn't that long, it's about 20 minutes. So I use that one so that I can, uh, I can show you guys how I work through it. All right, and I wonder how I can move this. Okay, I'll put it up here on the top. So you guys can see me. All right. So first, I make the folder, okay, and I put an all data folder, and that's where all the raw images I shoot raw, just to make sure that I, if I make mistakes, I can always have you know I have a little bit of a leeway to fix them. So I put all the raw images in there, and then I go ahead and open. Uh, okay, that's going to be a problem. Okay. Okay, I go ahead and open Lightroom, right here. Okay, and then I'll make a new catalog. So file, new catalog, and then I'll go through wherever I'm going to save the catalog, which is going to be on my hard drive, Mel's family, and then I just put cat for catalog, and then I'll go ahead and save that. <coughs> uh, this is an old one, uh, old catalog, so it's going to ask me to save it. I'm just going to skip it for now. All right, so when I first create the catalog, it's going to be blank. It's going to be nothing. Uh, so what I want to do, if you don't, if your screen is not like this, you're going to hit E, and E is going to bring you into the basic kind of like the library, either E or G. Okay, I guess you can use G for groups and E for uh, the library. And so if you can't see the side panels like that, uh, like I had them, so just hit Tab, and it'll bring both the side panels out. So I'll hit Import. And then I'm going to go to my hard drive, Mel's family, 
all data. And then I'll explain these settings once I get into the develop mode. But what I do is I do, uh, if I have a lot of time, uh, if I have, like, if I, if I don't have to, um, what's the word? So if I have, if, if I'm going to wait a long time to edit, I can just do a one by one, but that makes the catalog really, really big. So, uh, most of the time I keep it at minimal for build previews right here where it says file handling. Uh, so I do, uh, build previews and minimal. And then on the apply doing import, I usually, uh, I have a, a setting called base and I'll show you guys what that is in a little bit, but I usually put that to base and there's a bunch of previews, uh, presets. I'm sorry. There has a bunch of presets that you can use, but I usually make my own and then I just, uh, add it on import. So I'm going to add those. All right. It's going to take a little bit. Okay, so while this thing is loading, um, I want to explain uh, what made most of my editing really long before. So when you start editing, you feel an impulse to edit the pictures as you're picking them. And so what I've learned is that if I focus on just picking the best shots first and don't even touch any, any settings, uh, there are for, there's a few exceptions, like if it's a really good shot, but it's it's really bad lighting or something like that, and you want to see if it's uh, savable, then that's all I would do, and it'd be like a real quick boom exposure compensation type thing, and I'll explain that in a little bit. I know I'm, I'm talking kind of fast, uh, but so what I do is I focus specifically on just picking, right? So I'm going one image at a time, and then I pick uh, the best one, and so. Uh, when I use the desktop, I have this, um, let me see if you can see it. Hold on. Okay. So I have this trackball. This is my favorite one. It takes a little bit to get used to it, but once you get used to it, it's the best because you don't need to move your hand around or like a mouse. And so you don't feel any kind of pain on your forearm or I forget what the word is for when you get uh, pain, uh, from, from using the computer. But, uh, this one kind of alleviates a lot of that. Um, and so what I do is when you have a, you can use a mouse too, and the wheel, you can set it so that it, it goes from one image to the next, same as the arrows will uh, do uh, in this tutorial, just because this one's broken. And then I'll s program these two buttons and the wheel to either flag or unflag or X out whatever image so for example let's say i use the wheel to go from one image to the next and then when i like the image i'll hit i'll, I'll click it and then that'll flag it uh, if i make a mistake this one right here unflags it and if it's a shot that i know i'm not going to use so like maybe somebody's uh, everybody's blinking or it's blurry or it's just a bad shot then i'll hit this bottom one and it'll exit out and so that way uh, i don't include it to the JPEGs when I turn it into the, uh, when we do freelance work, I don't include those uh, obviously bad shots. So, but this one's broken. So I'm just going to use the keyboard and then I'll explain to you guys as I go, what keys I use. All right. So here we go. <clears throat> All right. So, uh, this, this is grid mode. You can get to grid mode if you hit G and then that basically shows you, you can zoom in and out. Uh, I only use a grid mode when I'm uh, unpicking, when I have too many selected. So uh, uh, normally I go into uh, this one right here. Uh, what's the name of this one? I forget. This one is loop view, loop view. So I hit E and E brings me here. Okay. And so this is the very first image and then uh, cute family. Yeah? And so I'm going to go uh, with the arrows. I'm going to go uh, left and right to go from one image to the next. You can see it at the bottom here. Uh, so I'll go from one to the next and you can see that I started out kind of high on the exposure And so one of the tricks that I use to make it easier for me to edit is I try to get the exposure as perfect as I can get it on camera Actually, I try to get the whole image as perfect as I can get it exposure and then composition uh, and, uh, and that kind of things those kinds of things so that when I finally get into editing uh, I know that I can go to the last one. It's going to be the closest to perfect as I got it, right? If I have a lot of time, I'm, I'm normally pretty close. If I don't, then um, I can adjust uh, afterwards. So right now, I'm only going to be picking, okay? 
and because I'm using the keyboard, I'm going to use the arrows to go left and right. <coughs> Puberty. And, uh, and then I'm going to use, use uh, the P to flag and uh, U to unflag in case I make a mistake. So, okay, so I'll go to the next one. As you can see, I checked the back of the screen to make sure that uh, I had it. And so I like to put uh, as many variations as I can. So, for example, this is horizontal. I like this one. And so I'll flag it. And then this is going to turn into vertical. So see how he's looking forward. I mean, I didn't get him looking at the camera, but actually I like the one where he's looking down. So I hit P to flag that one. Okay. And then they're looking at each other. Cute smiles. I'll pick this one and then I go to the next one. Okay. Mel's got a nice smile. So I'll pick that one. And so as you can see, I go as far as I can until it changes the composition. And then I go back. And then whichever one is my favorite, then I just pick that. So I'll go forward. <laughs> I'll make your faces. And then that one's cute, but I think it's pretty similar to the other one. So uh, let me check. So this, this is going to be the one that I think takes most of the time because you're picking. And sometimes it's hard uh, picking the, the best one. So I choose this one again. It's similar to the last one, but it's okay. And then Easton. This is cute. This one's okay. Okay. Oh, that's cute smile. Well. So I keep click that one. Yeah. So that's all I'm doing. I'm just going back and forth. Right? Now he's got his eyes closed on that one. And I'll try to critique some of my work once I start editing them. But I'm not gonna do too much of that just so I don't want this video to get too crazy. Okay, so I choose this one right here and okay, keep going. So see how just the orientation, orientation changed. So I go back to that one, flag it, and then I got them kissing. And then <laughs> now it's funny. Okay, so on the, he was looking kind of to the side for a while. So I just choose the one where she's, he's looking forward. It'd be better if he had his eyes closed, but it's okay. All right, so I'm just going through this, okay. Right there. Okay, it's a little slow to load. And so basically what I do is I try to go as fast as I can until the composition changes and I back it up one. And then if that one looks good, then I'll flag it. Okay, so again, it changed. So I go back one, flag it, and then... <laughs> Eastern hair is funny. That's a cute one. So I'll pick that one. And then I go forward. He's got such big eyes. Oh, that's cute smile. Okay, I go back up one. That's cute. I got a little tighter. I'm trying to get him to look at the camera. I think I got him. He's just looking a little bit off camera, but that's close enough. So I clicked on that one. Oh, that's cute. Yeah, I get that one. So you can see I put him in the sun, uh, but it's, he's being backlit. So that's why his hair looks crazy with the light. Uh, but if you look at his shoulders, the lighting on his shoulders is what they call, I think they call it rim lighting. Uh, so basically I was sh I'm shooting the shadow side. And because the sun is not directly behind him or there's nothing really bright behind him, except that the lighting separates him from the background really nice. Because the fact that I'm laying on the ground with a telephoto lens makes the background blurry, the foreground, which is the grass, blurry, and then um, it compresses the image really nice. So, oops, I like this one. But okay, so like oh, in the beginning, I would look at something like this and I would try to fix that black spot on the right. But I know that I can fix it later. And if I keep trying to backtrack and um, if I keep back backtracking and trying to fix each one that I'm before I even finish picking, it's going to take a lot longer. And what's going to happen is I'm going to start editing one and then I go to the next one and then I realize, oh, this one's better. So then I'll edit that one and then I wouldn't uh, I would only use the one before it. So that was time wasted. Right. So what I do is I pick them. And then if I have, like, if I'm shooting for an agent and I need a specific amount of shots, um, then 
I'll get those numbers that I need before I start editing. So that way I don't edit shots that I'm not going to use. Okay. And then so, something that I do, I'm getting pretty good at, at spotting if it's blurry or not. But in the beginning, it kind of takes a little while. So you can always take either the, the mouse or you can use a space bar and it'll zoom in. Usually, normally, if you use a space bar, it'll go to the last spot that you that you uh, zoomed on with the mouse. So, okay, so I'm gonna keep going. It's cute. I like that one. Oh, that's better too. Okay, let me let me back up. He looks, his face looks worried on this one, so I'm gonna use this one where he's almost smiling. And see, for some reason, this this one is cute, but the fact that he's crossing his legs on or his legs are crossing looks a little nicer. More like an action shot. So I like that one better. There's Mel being funny again. Okay, so see, he didn't think I was going to use this, but now I'm going to use this one. Okay, cute family, right? Keep going. Now, if you notice, uh, I'm at the park and it's really, really green. Uh, I'm in Hawaii, in case you don't know, and it's really green over here. So uh, with Nikon, when you go, uh, at least my experience, when you when you go shoot in a green place, uh, sometimes the the image turns magenta, and so the camera handled this one pretty pretty well, so it's not too bad. But sometimes you'll notice that it's magenta because there's so much green, or if there's like a red carpet or something like that, the the image turns uh, green because it's trying to compensate for that extra color. And so I just kind of switch it up. So I go vertical, horizontal, and then that was a little tilted, but I'll fix that one later. Okay. Oh, that's a cute smile. Look at that. He's a good looking kid. Okay. Now, for example, on this one, uh, Leanne's leg is in the shot. And I remember I asked her to move it. So even though this is a perfect shot of him looking at the camera, um, I, the leg bothers me so most likely I'll pick this one because it's so cute but I'll most likely crop it so so I can take Leanne's leg out so it doesn't look kind of um, not awkward I don't know what the word is just like a leg just sticking out this one's cute so I'll pick that one and then I see how I asked her to kind of move her leg so I should I'll get this one again kind of messed up and I cropped a little bit of his toes out so I'm gonna have to crop that Okay, and then actually, you know what? Since this one is just as good as that one, I'm gonna go back to the one with her legs in there and then take it out. And then I go back to this one. So the lighting is a little better on the last one, but uh, this one's nice and even. Okay, so for example, that one's blurry, so I just exit because I know I can't, I'm not gonna use that one. So I exit out so that when I de have to delete some, I delete the ones that uh, that I know I can't use. All right, so I'm gonna do, okay, so I like this one, and then I like them when they look at the camera, but I prefer when they're everybody's looking at the camera. So this one, they're looking at each other. Mm. Oh. Right. This one looks really nice and sharp, so it's cute. I thought it was funny that uh, Mel just grabs Easton front by the legs and he, by himself, he can just kind of keep him, keep his back straight, even though he moves him around. Okay. Okay. So uh, I just mentioned a little bit, but when you shoot low angles, then uh, ten, people's chins tend to double up. <laughs> Sorry, Mel. <laughs> they tend to double up. Uh, so it's not a good angle to shoot portraits, but what happens is I want the trees to be the, uh, the feature background. Uh, and if I go the opposite, I either have to go way high. So the grass is the feature. Or if I, if I'm standing straight to try, try to kind of square Mel's uh, jaw a little bit, uh, then what happens is you get, uh, the crowd or the people in the back. So, oh, okay. That's a good smile. There it is. Oh. So like this, everybody's got a good smile. This is the last one, but then Easton was uh, closing his eyes, so I'm not gonna use that one. 
this one's too dark for sure and then this one too uh, I didn't adjust before I started shooting so okay so this one try to use the uh, tree as foreground on the right side but it doesn't look like I wanted it to look so just to skip those and I'll get this one they look at each other okay that's another one right there okay so I'll pick this one and the next one's blurry so I'll X that one out using the X Nice, everybody's looking at the camera. Okay. Okay, this one is blurry, so X that one out. I'll pick the one before that, which is sharp, and then I'll move on. Okay, nice. Okay. I think it's similar to the last one. I'm a little tighter on this one, so I'm gonna pick that one. Okay, vertical one. Okay, I switched angles a little bit. Let's try to get Easton, Easton's face. That was too bright. Mel got on one of the vines. Oh, nice. Okay. Oh, there. Perfect. Now, when I shoot families, I try to get all, all of them first. So that way, um, the kids get tired faster. And once I get everybody, then I'll sh uh, take pictures of the kids. Oh, man. I got these blurry ones. I'll take pictures of the kids. So that way, um, they can kind of be on their own. Okay. Okay. Just this one's sharp, but they're they're kind of that looks mean right there. But so far away, they should be okay. It looks focused. It looks good though. It looks serious. And so, uh, so I shoot the kids so that way, uh, if they get tired, they can kind of take a break. And then I'll try to do individual shots with either the parents or individuals. Of, uh, of like separate, you know, the mom and the dad. Uh, I messed these up because they're blurry. So I'm just gonna skip. Okay. All right, so I got this one and everybody's looking. Yeah, okay, and it's not blurry. So. Okay, see you. Okay, blurry, blurry. And these are hard because you gotta. Normally, what I do is I move the focal point so that I can I can set it to where they're moving, but they're moving towards me. So most likely, I probably forgot to switch the continuous focus mode. So that way, as they get closer, the camera keeps focusing. So I don't know. That's normally one of the mistakes that I used to make in the beginning. Uh, and I try to fix it most of the time now. I fix it most of the time, but uh, once in a while I forget and I get shot like that. See, so like this one is good. Okay, next one's blurry. Mix that one up. Okay. Okay, that's. Oh, that's nice. I like that one. And kiss. Okay. So see if the closer I get, the closer I get to the ground, the less stuff you see behind. So if you see when I w go wide, you see a lot of the cars. It's not as you know, it's not as pretty to me. So that's why I try to get low as much as I can. Okay, that's cute. I think I told them to go nose to nose, so that's cute. <laughs> Eastman's is like, what are they doing? This was a request shot from them. So I wanted to kind of get on the ground and, you know, have fun. A couple of shots, a couple of angles. So I'll get this one and then I'll get Easton looking at the, look at the camera. This one, cute. Okay. 
<laughs> oh, that's cute. Okay. So right here, I'm basically laying on the ground with them. And that's why you can see the foreground is the grass in front of me. And it's always nice to have a foreground. Kind of gives it, gives it some uh, dimension to the picture so that you know. Uh, and anytime you can give uh, depth to a two-dimensional image with light or, or uh, depth of field or something in the front, something in the back, then it makes it a lot, a lot nicer. So that's what I was going for in this one. Okay, so another one. It was windy, so Leanne's hair is kind of a little bit. Move it around. Okay, it's cute. You know. Okay, all right, so that's the last shot. Okay, so now uh, I think I have a total of 204 images and I've, I've Pick them. I was able to finish picking in about 20 minutes, plus or minus the time that I, I spoke in the beginning. Uh, so if you figure you have 600 images, you can do that in, actually that's 26 minutes. So 600 images, maybe an hour, 15 minutes, somewhere in there. Um, and so, which is in, it's actually pretty good. <clears throat> all right, so now that I have all my picks, what I'll hit is I uh, what I'll do is I'll hit G again, and that brings me into grid, and then I'll filter it. So down here at the bottom it says filter. I'll hit the first one. That's a flag. So I think you have to hit it twice: once to select the bar and two to select the flag. And now out of the two hundred and four, I got fifty-eight images. Okay, fifty-eight images. So I'll go back to the first one. All right. So um, again. If this was a freelance job and they asked for a specific number, so for example, this is a photo tour and then a lot of uh, companies would want 50 shots for a photo tour. Sorry, I just ate and I'm trying to not, re I'm not burp <laughs> in front of you guys. So if I needed 50, then that means I would go through, right? I would just kind of scan through and look for very similar shots. For example, these two right here, I would probably remove one of them because I would have eight too many and so I would go through and remove any shots that were uh, passed over the number that I needed but let's say I have 48 and I need 50 then I would unfilter right and I would go through and I would look for the ones that are flagged so if you look here on the top left these, this one's flagged so something, a trick that I would use is if I don't have any, like for example, if I didn't, uh, if I don't have any different compositions and they're all the same, then I'll pick a similar one wide angle and just crop in on it. Uh, but that's kind of like the lazy way. Uh, so another thing would be to get two shots that are similar. So like this one, he's looking away and then this one, he's looking down. So I would might probably pick this one and just crop her leg. And that would give me 49. Then I do the same thing. Look for another one that's similar but not the same. Uh, flag that one, and that would give me 50. So then, if I have too many, I remove the, the ones that are uh, very similar. And if I have, if I don't have enough, if I need more, then I would go through uh, either zoom in on some or crop something that's wide angle, or look for uh, um, shots that are similar but not the same. And so that's just some techniques I but this is my own client my friend so I don't have to worry about that I can give them as many as I want and so they're gonna get right now it's 58 but what happens is I go through and then I'll edit and some of them are either too close that aren't worth that like there's no point in me giving them two they're almost exactly the same so I'll remove it or maybe I missed something when I was picking and um, and I can't fix it or it would take too long to fix it or I just don't like it and I'll just take it off. So normally I start with a high, a higher number and then as I'm actually editing, not just picking, but actually editing, uh, then I start dropping some. Okay, so I'll pick the first one, I hit D, okay? And this is where I start the editing process. And normally I'll take about five seconds on average, uh, fix something, uh, but, uh, 
if something really bothers me and if it's worth it, if it's nice enough that, you know, if I can fix something that, that uh, doesn't fit, then I'll take some time and do some Photoshop uh, work. But uh, most of the time I don't. Okay. So I'm on develop mode. And if you're in develop mode, if you hit tab, uh, eventually you get the two bars on the side come up and then you can create your own presets, right? So the preset that I created, this base plus, uh, it's actually just base. I don't know why it has plus on it, but it's base. So what I did is uh, I bring up uh, the uh, contrast to plus 15 and then uh, minus 25 on the highlights, plus 25 on the shadows, and it, which, you know, you might think, well, isn't that the same thing? Like if you bring down all the uh, bright spots and you bring up all the shadows, you're removing contrast uh, and then you add it with the with the contrast up here uh, so it's it seems like you're doing the same thing like you you're taking out away contrast and then you are adding it again uh, but it works I, I, I don't know how to explain it but it looks better like that um, because when you do highlights and shadows you you're you're working on the extreme whites and then you got you're working on um, the shadows, the shadows aren't really black because it has the blacks right there. So um, I don't know. It just kind of gives you the kind of like a little bit of a HDR uh, look. And then you add the contrast just to sharpen the edges. So uh, that's the best way I can explain it. All right. And then I leave everything else the same except for sharpening. I go to 50 and then I go luminance 15, 1, 5. Uh, and sharpens gives it a little bit extra sharpening. And then... Uh, luminance kind of reduces some of the noise that the dark dark areas might have and then I give it a minus 15 on the vignette so if you go minus it goes dark on the edges uh, on the corners and if you go plus it goes white and I, I want it to be dark so basically I want uh, the subjects to be the brightest point okay so this pretty much looks uh, looks good but I'll still play around uh, I go left and right on the exposure. I love this is why I like the uh, trackball because I can use the wheel and make nicer, nicer um, adjustments. With this, I just gotta click on it and then try to use the arrows. So I know that looks good right there. Okay, all right. So that was good. So if you see, it's a little hazy on the sides, just because that's that's because of the angle of the light behind them. And so, you know, if I try to make it a little bit more contrasting, it'll be it'll seem like too much. I think mm, that's not too bad. I'll go up just a little bit. Okay, that's not too bad. So it's not a huge difference, but let's see. This is. Uh, before and after, before, after, it almost hit, oh, okay, hold on, before, and it takes forever, after, can't really tell, so that's before, and that's after, it's hard to tell, because there wasn't one that was too messed up, so, okay, go to the next one, same thing, uh, because it's similar lighting than the last one, I just hit previous and it'll bring the settings over. And you see how it kind of changed a little bit. Um, it takes a little while to to kind of practice and figure out what kind of changes you need to do. But uh, the better you get at shooting, the less settings you have to change uh, once you start editing. So again, I'm bringing a previous, so I'm just doing the same thing. Now for this, the top is way too bright, and so what happens is it kind of pulls away from from the family. So what I do is I go to the gradient filler filter, and then I go minus one on the exposure, and somewhere around there, and then I just bring it down so that uh, see, so it's not doing much because it was a cloudy day, or it's just too overexposed up here, so you can't really do much. So I'm just going to delete that and maybe crop it down just a little bit, just so it's not so. Oops. Okay, so right now, see how 
it, it changes the uh, the ratio of the picture. I don't want that. I want the ratio to stay the same. So I'm going to hit the little lock over here. Okay, and then bring it down. And then just enough so you can see the top. And then I'll shift it over. So there in the bottom left. So if you, if you look when you're cropping, you get the thir uh, rule of thirds. So two lines. There's three rows, three columns. And you want the action to be or the subject to be in any of these intersections, right? So for this one, they're on the left, so I want them on the left bottom. That was good. Okay. Not a huge difference, but... Okay. See how, because you can see the sun or the light on this one, it gets, it kind of gets a little bit... <laughs> I forgot it's a touch screen. It gets a little bit uh, hazy above their heads. Or well, once you, the sun is not hitting the lens, it turn, it gets a little bit uh, less hazy and, more sh and sharper, but it gets darker. So I'm just gonna bring this up. It's so hard to do with the touch pad. So somewhere around there, I don't want to get too crazy. All right, so that's good. Okay, similar. So I just said previous. Okay, bring this down. For some reason, it looks too bright on this side, but on this image compared to the last one, so I'll just bring it down a little bit. Okay. Next. Now, I haven't mentioned color because the camera actually did a pretty decent job here, but sometimes the camera will go crazy if it's on auto wide balance. So, what you can do is um, I'm just going to move the temperature and the tint and uh, like I said, track ball is a lot easier, but I just go left and right and kind of see. See, like obviously that's too blue, still kind of blue. And then once it starts getting too orangey, uh, like this, you know, it looks nice and warm and stuff, but I try to go neutral and then that way you have more options in the future. And so, yeah, so that's kind of, yeah, that looks okay. So right now, just by the eye, which I'm looking at, at uh, Easton's skin. So that looks good to me. And uh, okay, so let me zoom back in. So that looks good to me. But if I hit it, if I hit the S shot, right now, uh, I have it set to 6231. If I choose S shot, 6050. So it's actually pretty close. Right? Uh, so I'm just going to leave them as is for now until I see something that's kind of too blue or too yellow, too warm. Yeah, I am going to bring up the exposure just a little bit. Okay. Another thing on the exposure, usually the skin, when you see red up here on the on the histogram, uh, when you're looking at red, most of the time is the skin color. And so I try to get the peak of the red on this end, right? If it's here, that means mm -hmm. it's, it's uh, on even, even color, but you don't want even. You want the skin to be a little bit uh, bright. <laughs> Sorry, you want the skin to be a little bit bright because that's the subject. That's what you want people to notice first. So I always bump that up so that the skin isn't too dark. I don't know if that made sense, but I'll show you in something that's a little bit more obvious later. Okay, so same thing. This one. The problem with this picture is that Easton is getting, being hit by a ray of light, so his he's a lot brighter. Uh, plus, his lighter skin too. Uh, so is Leanne. So male is kind of like the darker one, uh, but it's not so crazy. So one thing I can do is kind of bring it up so male is exposed. And then I can take this right here, the adjustment brush, which is you can hit K or you can click on here. And then uh, I'll hit, let me go half, I go 0 0.5, 0 0.57. And then I got to make this smaller. And I use the brackets for this. Uh, you can also, if you're using the mouse, you can also use the uh, the wheel to make it smaller. And so I'm just gonna put it around East, Easton's face, click it, and then make it a little darker. And then she's a little bright, so I'll click her, and then try to get them kind of even. Mm, it's around there. It's hard to get anything like perfect, perfect. So I'll bring it up a little bit. Okay, that's good. <clears throat> next one all right so I'm gonna hit previous 
But what happens is the bright spots that I, or the darker spots are going to be in a different place. So I'll go on here. I'll remove the ones that I put up, like this one. It's gone. And then there's another one, right? I put two. So where's the other one? Oh, wait, no. It's the same one because I never... Okay. So I'll go his face, her face, and kind of try to balance them out. These things are a little, are still a little bright, but not too bad. Okay. So, see, now his face is not being hit by the light. It's only his neck. But, you know, I'm not too concerned about his neck. It's his face that I worry. So, I'm just going to bring everybody up. Right around there. And go next. It was a little dark, so I'll just bring it up. Okay, so let me show you an example. So I'll leave it how it was. So this is how I shot it. It's obvious that they're dark. <clears throat> and even if you can't tell, because it takes a little while to kind of to kind of see it. Uh, but if you look at the, history, the histogram, you see that the peak is way over here on the left. Uh, I guarantee you that when I get somewhere around here, this area, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be nice and exposed. So I'm just going to eyeball it. Go like this and then right around there okay so you see that see the peak is getting close to over here okay now it's not all the way over here because uh, the tree is really bright this area right here is really bright so uh, if I push it up a little bit more uh, they're gonna be um, what's the word washed out they're gonna be just too too what too bright too bright I'm trying to keep my voice low because my daughters are sleeping so I don't want to wake them up uh, that's why my voice keeps cracking does be really okay so bring it back up right there Easton's white white but he's cute so he can get away with it Okay, so next one. Okay, for this one, similar. So I'm just going to hit previous. And it takes a while. This is really slow. This could have been uh, a lot faster. But okay, so th he's way too bright now because he's the main main uh, up subject. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it down so he is nicely exposed right about so I'm just kind of eyeballing so I'll say right around there be a little dark still okay I'll go there okay all right so that's good nice and sharp the tree looks good I like the tree okay and then I just hit previous see if it's close a little bit, I don't know, it seems like it was a little too bright, huh? Let me bring it back down. Oh, that's good. Okay, this one looks a little bright. Down one. Okay, next one. That is so cute. <laughs> okay, let me check this. It looks kind of blurry. Okay, good. It's not blurry. Sometimes it's hard to tell. It takes a while to load. Okay, so that one looks good. I like everything. This one got dark all of a sudden. So I'll click it. Bring it up. This is really slow. Okay, that's close. So you just kind of have to play with it and see if, you know, if, if you don't like it, if you don't like, if it feels like it's too bright or too dark, just keep going up and down until something seems right. So, like I said, I try to get it perfect on camera, but it's not going to be perfect all the time, especially like if it's a really bright day and you can't really see the screen that well. Uh, you can try to use a histogram. If not, then you just have to eyeball it, get it as close as you can. And then once you're in, back home in a nice dark room where you can see, um, I had previews on this one. Uh, where you can see the details, hopefully you calibrated the screen, uh, then it's a little, you can get a little closer. 
screen. So cute. That's a nice shot. Nice. <laughs> Look at that face. Ah, look at that hair. He's got the eyelashes of his dad. His dad now has the, the same eyelashes. That's how he got Leanne. Okay, here we go. Cute. Still dark, so. Another thing I can do, for example, let's say uh, all the exposures on these are similar. And so on the bottom here, uh, I pick this last one, and I like the exposure for this one. So then I pick all the ones that are similar, and then I'll just hit sync. And then I'll make sure that the, the settings that I want to transfer are clicked. So I don't want white, white balance to transfer. So it's just exposure and other stuff that I put on the on the settings: exposure, contract, highlight, shadows, sharpening, lumens, and post. I can I can actually just do the um, Exposure because that's the only thing that I changed and sync, but I can leave this rest the same. It's fine And so I just go back and double check make sure everything looks good uh, He wasn't sit sitting. Oh, okay, so Okay, so example this one's a little too dark still even with that settings and then see this black thing right here. I don't like that. So uh, I'm going to Erase it with the spot re spot remover. This one right here. Oops, no wait. Spot remover Q. I pushed Q, but it didn't it didn't change. I don't know why. Uh oh. I don't know what. Oh, okay. Well, what is going on here? Okay, there it is. So I'll make it big. And then I'll hit here. Make it bigger. And then now this is not going to work out because uh, the angle of the light. Is it? Oh, maybe it is. Okay. I'll bring it down. Oops. Okay. That's a bad. Oh, no. I don't like it at all. Okay. So it's going to look funny. Just because it's down here. Uh, oh, plus I have a clone. So let me change it to heal and we see how that looks. So clone, it captures exactly the, what's on that circle. Heal kind of try to blend, tries to blend the two. So that looks a little better, unnoticeable. So, okay, so this one, one, one of the ones that I kind of did a, uh, a group edit. So I'll go up a little bit. Same the previous. Nice looking up. That's cute. So dark is out of the light, so I'm gonna go up a little bit. Okay, better. Okay, this one's way dark. So bring them up. So much. So they're nice and bright, but then the background is way too bright. So I'm gonna use that filter that didn't work on the on the sky on this. And I'll bring it down to his leg. And I have it at half a stop, but I'm gonna bring it down one full stop. One and a half. And drop it more. Right there. Okay, good right there. And so let me show you the difference of this one. So before the top was, uh, if it comes up, it's taking forever. So this is how dark it was before. When I brightened, brightened their faces, the uh, the top got bright too, which is too bright. And then I kind of brought it down a little bit. This area right here is still too bright. So let me see if I can fix that. With the spot remover. I mean, not the spot remover, sorry. The, the uh, adjustment brush. I'm just gonna kind of brush this area right here. Oof, I'm not that good at using this thing. Okay, it's not too bad. Okay, 
Okay, so before, oops, before, after. Another way you can do it is you can leave the, the exposure as it is, take this one and bring it up. Take the um, adjustment brush, bring it up, and then make it bigger, and then just kind of try to hit them. You want the faces to be bright, so kind of hit them right there, hit them right there, hit it right there. Okay, mm, it would work if the brush was bigger. So let me see if I can. Yeah, maybe make it bigger. Maybe cover his body. Boom. 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 Okay, so that's another way. Uh, it doesn't look as good on this one, but let me see. So that's uh, before, right there's before. So the way I'm getting before is by the slash, the backslash and after and it's not too bad i kind of see the circles though so it kind of bothers me so i'm just going to copy it from before so I'll choose it delete it close it previous oh that one got really bright okay bring it down right there it's good too bright too dark Okay, that's good. Next one. Previous. Now this is gonna be different because the angle is different. So yeah, see how his face stay dark. So I'm gonna undo that. And it's taking forever. So undo. And then just bring up the exposure. Okay, and then what I do is I do a net minus on on the spot remover, minus one and a half, and that should darken this. And maybe over here too. Over there. Okay, so not too bad. Okay, next one, same thing, previous. Okay, that looks good. Next one. So if you do previous, even if the one before that was landscape, it'll try to do the same uh, adjustments. So it'll, it'll have it so that top is still top, bottom is still bottom. So oops. So I'll dark, make this dark right there. Okay. So that red is just uh, is showing you where the brush is, but it's so slow that it's not coming off. Leanne looks a little dark. I mean, oops, I take this one. Okay, yeah, that's why she was dark. So I'll click this one. And I'm back in this side. And done. Before, after. Okay. Now, for example, this is the same, but if you do previous, it's going to be bring the last settings. But I want the settings from this one before. So I'll click that one. I'll control. I select that one and then I'll sync and synchronize and it should be the same. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Next. Bring up the exposure. Next, this one looks 
I like the sun went away so it looks a little bit more blue so I'll bring up the exposure if I get this thing just a little oh, man just a little bit and then I'll bring up the uh, the temperature Not too much just like that so before after it looks a little bit more yellow than the other one but it's close enough Let me bring them down just a little bit. Okay. Exposure. Oh, man, I'm not used to working with uh, arrows and a mouse mouse pad. Okay, previous. Almost done, guys. So you can see when I click it, it takes forever to change. Uh, I'm assuming it's because I'm going at almost an hour of uh, recording this video, so that's probably why. Okay, so I'm just going to hit previous again. Okay, it's kind of dark. Up. So then the next one. Previous. Okay. Man, it takes forever. So, okay, I'm going to do the next three. Hit sync. Synchronize. Go back one and then check. That one's good. That one's good. It's too bright. Mm, no, looks good. A little bit too bright. Next one. Next one. Okay, this one it looks green. His face looks green. So I'm gonna bring the tint up. See, I can It takes forever to switch, so I can't really tell. That looks good. I see a little bit of blue right here, so I might be able to save some of that sky. Uh, oh, that's too much, so maybe I can bring it just down to one. No. Oh. That's okay. So on these, what I can do is uh, I can kind of drop the exposure and then hit the um, the adjustment brush, come up to maybe, let's say a stop, hit them, and then boom. So that's kind of like an obvious circle, but is it? Oh, come on, change. Not too bad. I just want them to be the brightest, brightest spot. So uh, I'll bring it down a little bit. Spot, spot, done. Yeah, something like that. one I'm just gonna hit them right there boom 
still right bring it down okay same thing boom hit him okay that's good next one I'll just hit previews on this one they're around the same spot okay next previous and then the lady right there in the bottom bothers me so I'm gonna crop it I'm just gonna get her out of the way get that fence out of the way too done okay a little bright on the top so bring it down just a little bit next one hit up right there Oops, almost dark. Oops, make it up. Oops, too much. Previous. Previous and previous that might be too bright, yeah. Bring it down a couple up and then next previous. And last picture. And I don't know if previous is gonna work on this one. And taking forever. Right there. It's not too bad. Okay. So that took an hour, and to be honest, uh, it should have been faster. Uh, just because this computer, I'm using the laptop uh, because um, Megu has to edit her weddings from this week, and I didn't want to take up the computer. Uh, Plus, I already had the software installed on this to record the screen. So, <laughs> all right. So, that's it. All I do from this point on is uh, whatever settings the company gives me, I uh, select all the images. In this case, it's my clients or they're my clients. So, I hit export after I select control A to select all. And uh, for my clients, I, I don't even have the settings here. So, let's see. I don't really have settings. I'll use whatever settings these are. And then I don't change the name. Actually, you know what? It's okay. So normally I have settings. Like I said, I'm using the laptop, so it's not set up to uh, what I normally export. But I just, for my clients, I do full JPEGs, uh, full large JPEGs. So that way I have them. They're as big as I can uh, have them since I shoot raw. And I export them and send them a link. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I'm thinking maybe I'll do a summary. So I'll release this one, and then if anybody has questions or or they're confused about something, uh, let me know. And what I'll do is I'll do a, a summary so that for those that really need help, they can watch this tutorial. And for those that already got the basics and they just need the, like the little tricks, the tricks of the trade, then I'll make a summary uh, video of uh, so so that's so they can have that. Um, and yeah, uh, so that's all I have. Uh, I feel like I'm missing something, like I should be telling you something right now. Okay, well, I'll think about it. Uh, so thank you for watching. Let me know what you think about these videos. Uh, I can already tell you it's, it's too long. So, um, you know, hopefully uh, this will help you uh, if you're just starting out or if you you know, get into like the uh, wedding industry somewhere, especially here in Hawaii, 
then you, it'll save you a lot of time. And when you're shooting, you know, two, three weddings a day sometimes, uh, then you can you need as much time as you can save. You, you need to save as much time as possible. Uh, so they, these tricks don't seem like much. Just the fact that you start out with picking without trying to edit anything saves you tons and tons of time. So do that first and then get your numbers right and then edit. Try not to put too much time into editing. Um, and the best way you can do that, the best way you can achieve that is by trying to get the picture as perfect as you can get it on camera. And so that's all I have. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to this channel. I have a lot, um, I have a lot more photography videos coming up. A lot of the places that I shoot, a lot of the techniques that I use. And so if you're interested in that, please subscribe and I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.